Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you to Lecom Harbor Center Key Bank Rink here in downtown Buffalo for tonight's Western New York Federation High School hockey matchup between the Canisius Crusaders and the St. Francis Red Raiders. I'm Jack Cruiser. Joined alongside me, Francis Beck. Francis, good to see you. Yes, yeah, Sunday night hockey at the Harbor Center. What a better way to start your week than with some great hockey action between two of the area's biggest rivals. We've got two teams here today that just faced off against each other a few weeks ago on December the 4th. These two teams played, and St. Francis came away with the win, a 3-2 to two victory. Francis, what do you expect out of today, given that score a few weeks ago? Yeah, Franny's pulled away in the end. They scored twice in the third period to win it, and I think you're going to see a very aggressive game. You know, they had a lot of penalties last weekend, and again, these are rivals. They don't like each other. If we're going to talk, I don't know how they did. I can keep track of how they did in other sports, but remember on the gridiron, Franny's got two over on Canisius uh, in the fall, winning the Monsignor Martin title. So I'm sure uh, that's kind of in the back of the mind of some of these hockey players for Canisius, that rivalry as well. So your starting goaltenders for tonight for St. Francis, it'll be the man who got the win last weekend. Brandon Walzak, a junior standing at six foot O, weighing in at 150 pounds. Walzak wearing number 30 stands at the lonely end of the rink. And on the other side for Canisius, it'll be number 35, Mike Gould, the senior. Gould didn't get the start last time. It was Braden Grisbach who got 22 saves on 25 shots on goal in that contest, but they'll go with a new goaltender here tonight. Yeah, meanwhile, St. Francis with Braden Walzak. He's a, ju he's a junior. About 94% save percentage, so they'll be looking to him uh, to make some stops tonight for Franny's. Mike Gold enters today, only playing one game, that one being a loss. Canisius trying to get their footing back after winning their first three games this season. They've now dropped three in a row, the most recent of those coming to the hands of Cathedral Prep in a non-league game on Friday. Yeah, they. you know what? They... Credit to Canisius. They started with a tough schedule. They get McQuaid. Then they face Will North, which is always a powerhouse. Then Nichols, which is join, rejoining the Fed. And then, of course, St. Francis and, uh, you know, Cathedral Prep. So they wanted to get out to, they wanted to battle test their team before they got into league play. And, you know, that's what you get. You take a few losses sometimes uh, when you play that kind of schedule. But I think if things go to plan for the Crusaders, uh, those losses will be will be learning experiences for them when we get to February. All right, we'll turn you over to the public address as we stand for the anthems. Almost ready to go here from downtown Buffalo. Harbor Center at the Key Bank Rink. The Crusaders and the Red Raiders in a rematch of last weekend's game. St. Francis obviously pulled away in that one. Canisius, though, looks to even up the season series. Canisius wearing the road blues. I would assume the road team on the scoreboard today as they've got the blue on blue uniforms Gold numbers, white trim, St. Francis on the other side in a Detroit Red Wings style white uniform with the red numbers, red pants. It's a good jersey matchup today. And I'm sure 
Our friends Randy and Stu would appreciate these <laughs> uniforms today. You can clearly see both teams' numbers, and we're in for a good one. The opening faceoff is won by St. Francis, and going back for it is their defenseman, Andrew Allen. Using the neutral zone, St. Francis tries to send it in, gets blocked. Regrouping here will be Bryson Roberts, who scored the game-winning goal against Canisius last weekend with just three and a half left in the third period. Roberts tucked one home that ended up being the winner. Down in the far corner, St. Francis battles away for it with Roberts. Pops to the half wall where Aaron Eberhard skates away with it through center. Turning with it is the captain, Luke Braun. Into the corner, Braun with it. Braun stands on his feet as he breaks the check. Now back to the point it goes to Tom Stouffer. Keen sends it to the half wall and tipping it was Adam Trubish. Now out to center, St. Francis clears. Race for the puck, icing is delayed. And with the icing will be called. So it'll send it all the way back down to the St. Francis end. Yeah, that was awful dangerous there for Canisius as number nine almost had a chance all alone in front of the net with the puck. He just couldn't get his stick on it. In that last game between these two teams, got very physical, 61 minutes worth of penalties. We'd look to see the physicality pick up in this one. There were three 10-minute misconducts in that game last weekend, so we know these two schools don't like each other in every sport playing against each other. Big rivalry going back decades and decades, of course. Now to center, Canisius regroups with Max Methane. Picking it off in the neutral zone is Eli Noble. He'll send it inside St. Francis territory. Turning with it is Sam Chavetta. Chavetta bumps it ahead. Noble comes away with it, gets it back to his keeper, Mike Gould. Pass stolen away, backhand shot is a weak one that gets tapped away by Gould, no problem, off the stick of Ryan Mahoney. Now in the corner, battling for it here is Andrew Allen. It pops back to the point, tipped by a Canisius forward. Long point shot goes high and wide, rolls around to the near boards. Now out to center. Two on one opportunity if they can hustle for Canisius. Here is French, and that one will go into the corner and pop free. St. Francis with an opportunity the other way. They'll go for a change, however. Picking this one off in the neutral zone is Ryan Spies. Spies down to the half wall, sends it behind the cage. Into the far corner, turning with it is Nolan French. He'll come away with the puck as it squirts to the slot, and he'll go falling over his man, and now out to center, or almost out to center, St. Francis had his. Now there's a shot, blocker save, rebounds in front. It's poked down as Walzak stood his ground. Another shot and a save to the corner for Walzak. Battle along the boards. Now we see the physicality pick up a little bit more and poking it out to center are the Red Raiders. You know, great play by number 10 on that two-on-one Bousquet. Uh, you know, we saw that two-on-one Canisius had, but it was Bouquet kind of chasing the middle of the ice and really stopping that two-on-one, the pass going through the middle. 14-13 remaining in the opening period. No score from Harbor Center in downtown Buffalo. Key Bank rink. Shots are one nothing in favor of the Crusaders, and they've got it in the offensive territory. Now it's stolen away by St. Francis and cutting through the neutral zone is Sachaki. Now into the corner it goes and is this another icing? Possibly an offside. Let me see. I guess it is no. I guess it is an icing because they're going to put the uh, face off down in the St. Francis end. I didn't think it was that far down. We'll stand on the side of the officials here for that one. The icing is ruled, and St. Francis wins the draw along the half while they send it across ice into neutral territory. Sachaki couldn't get there first. Coming away with it is Trubish for the Crusaders. Trubish trying to work it to the middle. It's tipped just wide. Dagler was there to tip it just to the right of the cage. Now St. Francis will try to break out along the near wall. Sachaki got caught up with a Crusader, and now here's... Angelo Pepis, he couldn't get a handle on it though, and it goes out to center. Canisius will regroup with their defense, and Devin Schaefer, he uses the wing. 
McMullen was there. Now up through the middle and getting hit hard was Evan Healy as he hits the deck. But Kenesha still with possession on the far wall now through the neutral zone. Here comes Evan Healy with a shot save made. Rebound goes to the corner. St. Francis will smartly tap it into the boards and create a battle along the near corner. Sent behind the net. Now stealing it is Canisius and sending it out in front there was Braun. No one home there to tap it. Now back to the point. Canisius has it. Stolen away. St. Francis through the neutral zone with Max Taylor. Taylor takes a long shot. Save made. Pops free on the rebound. Canisius will float this one right out of play for a whistle. 12.38 to go in the opening period. Still no score. You know, two one shots and it's, you know, I was, think, I was thinking, how does Canisius not give up any shots now they have only have one? They're not really playing defense. Their defense is kind of their offense, and they're just being so aggressive. Franny really hasn't had many chances on the Canisius net. St. Francis now with it inside Canisius territory, but they won't be able to sustain pressure as Canisius's Max Methane will get it out to center. Off the wall, battling for it here is Nolan French. St. Francis will play it off the boards and into Canisius territory. Going back for it is Max Methane. Around the wall, good stick work there on the wall by Canisius, and they'll get it out all the way down the ice. This one will be coming all the way back on an icing. Jack, if you're, if you're St. Francis, you need to, just like that last couple seconds, need to get puck possession, move the puck around, Maybe calm your nerves a little bit. You could tell, you know, it's a rivalry game, even though they already played. Uh, maybe nerves are a little bit of a factor. They need to take control of this game somehow, because if they don't, Canisius can easily pop one for a goal and take control. Down below the net, Ryan Spies uses the boards, looking for Aaron Eberhard, and he'll skate it out to center. Falling over it there was Nolan French. St. Francis will regroup. Almost tipped in the neutral zone, but St. Francis skates it inside offensive territory. Pass to the slot, tip right on, save made by Gold. Behind the net, battling for it for St. Francis is Drew Ahmed. Coming away with it, however, will be Ryan Spies, and he uses his man on the wing in Sean Keane. Keane skates with speed through the center, now into the slot, leaves it for a man. There's this shot, goes just wide. St. Francis will smack it into the corner, stepping up as the Canisius defenseman. He doesn't get the puck, but coming back to keep it in play is Eberhard. Now St. Francis will clear and go for a change as Drew Ahmed takes a long slap shot that goes high and wide and rolls around the boards out to center. Sent back in by St. Francis, and Canisius will look to break out as they go for a change. St. Francis regroups. Max Chavetta played it through the neutral zone, but picked off there by Angelo Pepis. Tapped ahead. McCarty couldn't get any momentum, so it goes back to Canisius' own end below the red line. And in the near corner now sending it across is the Crusaders. And they'll continue to work along the boards in their own end, looking for an outlet pass as St. Francis really putting on that four check. However, it leaves an opportunity for Canisius the other way with speed. Here comes Pepis, but he takes it into the corner. Squeezed out there nicely by Jacob Crosta. Now back to the point it comes for Canisius. Tapping it into the corner again are the Crusaders. Here's an opportunity pass to the slot. Shot right on save made by Brendan Walzak. Both of these teams with a bunch of chances on that left shift. Both coaches got to be happy with their way their offenses are getting going in the midway through this first period, getting solid chances on the net, two-on-ones, good passes up the middle. Zach Dimitrov wins the faceoff for St. Francis, but Canisius puts on the forecheck, and they get it right back along the near boards. Cutting to the middle of the ice here is Braun, puts a shot just wide of the cage. Stepping up is the Canisius defense in Max Methane. He sent a pass to the middle that went off of a leg. Now stealing it back for Canisius along the far wall. And having it below the goal line. Looking for a pass to the slot was Braun, but he didn't have anyone home. Pass tipped right on. What a save there from Walzak. The deflection right in the slot went right in the pads. Walzak got down, got the pads together, and covers for the whistle. 9.44 remaining in the opening frame. 4-3 are the shots. No score here from Harbor Center. And fortunately for defenseman Jacob Costa, uh, his goalie bailed him out, made that save. It went off his stick in front and nearly went in. So uh, he uh, thanking his goal, uh, should be thanking his goalie right now for preventing 
an own goal for his team. This thing stays tied at zero. Mateo Torres threw a shot off the breakout right on goal. No problem for Mike Gold as he poked it up and snatched it out of midair, and he'll hang on for the whistle as well. Looks like Canisius is making a line change. St. Francis sends it below the goal line. Coming away with it here will be Torres. Packs it, pokes it back to the point. Sending it now in will be Alex Bosquit. Canisius has it now through the neutral zone. It's tipped ahead by McMahon. Coming way out to make the play is Walzak, and Canisius will keep it below the goal line. They've got two men there. St. Francis comes back to try to steal it away. But the Crusaders have it now with Spies, who sends it right back below the goal line. McMahon couldn't get his stick on it. Stepping up now are the Crusaders. McMahon battling along the boards. Coming away with it here is Richards looking for McMahon, and he couldn't get the shot off as he wanted to. Seemed to fan on the puck a bit. No problem for Walzak. He'll hang on for the whistle. Yeah, if he would have had just a bit of more control, I think he gets that by the left side of the goalie, actually, to the shooter's. Uh, shooter's left side, goalie's right side, but not quite enough on it. Walzak's able to hold on for the save. Canisius trying to control off the faceoff, and it'll be turned over here in the offensive zone. Alex Bosquit will try to clear, but stolen away by Canisius. Right in the slot, there's a tip, and it goes off a high stick. Canisius will let St. Francis touch it, and play continues here inside St. Francis territory. Point shot is saved by Walzak to the near board. Here is Jackson Antonelli looking for an outlet and has one through the middle. It's poked ahead by Kyle Wicca and sent back in by Canisius. In the middle third, St. Francis will try to keep control. The forecheck keeps on coming for Evan Healy and the Canisius Crusaders. St. Francis will regroup now below their cage. Antonelli pass through the middle, a risky one, almost stolen away there by Sean Keane. But Keane couldn't keep it ahead and it goes all the way into Canisius territory. So far, however, about 10 minutes into this opening period, it's been a lot of Canisius Crusader action on the left end of the rink on your screen. Canisius going right to left in the opening frame. However, this one will come all the way back down on an icing call into the Canisius side. And I think this will be a good time for St. Francis to regroup. They're going to get the face off in the Canisius end. Let's try to set something up, try to get some offense going, move the puck around, and get a good shot on net. We've seen a lot of Canisius, as he just said. Let's... See if we can see some Franny's action. Higgins loses the draw for St. Francis. He'd been good already tonight in the faceoff, Don, as St. Francis seems to be winning in that category through the opening nine and a half, ten minutes of this first period. Canisius, however, will skate it out to center with their defenseman, Max Methane. I beg your pardon, that's Tom Stouffer, and he'll take it all the way below the goal line and still battle for puck possession. Poking it in front of the net was Pepis, but it bounces to the corner off of a leg. Turning around in the corner is Jacob Costa. And now St. Francis sends it out to center. It goes off a stick. Canisius will dump it right back in. Forecheck really working out well for Canisius as they almost steal it right back again below the goal line of St. Francis as the Frannies can't get any momentum going on the breakout. We'll see if they can do it here as they start below their own cage with Costa again. He loses puck possession, and now we've got a whistle. And a penalty. This will be a good chance for St. Francis here as Canisius will head to the penalty kill. Yeah, again, there's a great chance for St. Francis to try to get the puck in the net, calm down, and just get, get puck movement. I'm always a big fan of puck movement, getting an offense set up, being able to move around. I think that puts a lot of pressure on a defense. Mateo Torres will step in to take the face off for St. Francis. He wins it cleanly. Back to the point it goes. Down low, and back up top it comes for Chavetta. Now near side circle, shot goes just wide to the left. Rolling around the boards, Chavetta will keep it in play momentarily before Canisius will send it the length of the ice with Luke Braun. Slashing call on Canisius will set them up on the penalty kill, and we'll see how St. Francis attacks the power play here as they send it in off the break. Misses a stick of a Crusader down low. That'll give St. Francis a chance to set up back to the point. Now here is Roberts. To the half wall. Pass across ice is knocked down by Chavetta. Chavetta will go to the corner and turn with it. 
trying to find a man to send it to. Chavetta will now create some space for himself. Trying to pass it below the goal line. It gets blocked now at the point as Kanishas tried to clear. Near side at the circle, it's Taylor. Taylor up top. There's a shot rebound as it was kicked out nicely by Mike Gold and cleared away by Kanishas momentarily. However, they couldn't get it out. Turning in the corner now, here is Wicca sending the pass to the slot as he had a man cutting but couldn't hit him. There's a shot from the far circle. And Bryson Roberts, he had the game winner last time these two teams played. He was looking for the first one here. Still, however, no score, 5.37 to go in the first period. Yeah, we saw two almost chances for St. Francis. The stick's either, you know, not quite the full thing on the puck or, you know, the stick just being just off on the shot. But uh, I think you got to be happy with that for if you're St. Francis. They've got possession in the offensive end, setting up on the five on four power play with about 35 seconds to go in that. Turning along the half wall here is Ryan Mahoney. Mahoney uses the man in the corner in Ma Monaco. Now back to the point, that shot gets blocked in the slot. Canisius will play it off the wall. Keeping it in, however, is St. Francis and the pass comes to the near side for Mahoney again. Mahoney tried to play it off the boards. Canisius will try to clear and now they will do so thanks to Liam McCarty. And it goes right on goal where Walzak will settle it as the final six seconds of the penalty tick away. And Sean Keane will rejoin the team. Canisius looks to break out now after a solid penalty kill with a couple blocked shots. Big save from Mike Gold on an open opportunity from the far side. Now here's a steal for St. Francis in the offensive end. Turning with it there was Roberts. Roberts passed to the slot. It missed the stick of Josh Monaco. And now out to center. Canisius has it with speed. Slowing it down, though, was St. Francis's defense on the back check. Canisius will keep it in, however. Laying a pass off to the near circle. Shot will go wide to the right off the stick of Luke Daigler. Back to the point it goes for Canisius. Here's Trubish with a long point shot, gloved down by Brendan Walzak. You know, if you're St. Francis, there's still a lot you can take away from that power play. You didn't score, but you had a plenty of chances, and I think your offense got into a rhythm, which is always a good thing midway through the first period. They didn't really have anything so far until then. That's something they can take for the rest of this period and into the second. Below the goal line, Canisius battles for it with St. Francis. It pops free. Odd angled shot is saved by Walzak off the stick of Luke Braun. Now below the net, Luke Daigler sends it back to the point. Stouffer's shot tipped right on, save made, rebound is covered up by Walzak as in front of the net. It was Austin McMullen getting his teeth and stick dirty there, hacking at the goaltender, and St. Francis didn't like that a little too much. No, and I think that the defense is frustrated for St. Francis because Walzak has had to bail him out multiple times uh, you know Canisius has been getting pucks to the net and they've been getting good scoring opportunities St. Francis needs to clean up in front of Walzak they can't rely on him to make these big saves all game long it seems like Francis it's the Canisius forecheck they just won't let St. Francis get out of the zone yes and, and that's a big issue as well for St. Francis however here come the Frannies the other way with a break pass to the slot almost goes off a of Canisius Luke Braun and into the net, however, he clears it away. Now stolen away by St. Francis on the forecheck. Pass to the slot, goes off of Gold. Coming out to make the play was Gold. And dangerously so, Canisius will skate it out to center. Three on two, break the other way. Along the near wall, here is Stouffer. Pass to the slot, misses everybody. And will go all the way out to center. And now St. Francis will try to hustle after it. Bodies being thrown, and now an offside on the Canisius blue line. 3-11 to go in the opening period. Shots are 8-6 to six in favor of the Crusaders so far. Yeah, that was a great play by Tom Stouffer of Canisius. He stopped what potentially could have been a really scary situation for the Crusaders. There was a streaking forward for St. Francis, but he came in and stopped that pass before it could even happen. St. Francis will send it out to center. Canisius gets possession with Richards, who sends it to the St. Francis blue line. Couldn't get it in, though, as stepping up and making the play was Chavetta. He tried to take it himself, couldn't do so into Canisius' territory. Chavetta now comes away with the puck, lost it again, but St. Francis will send it right on goal and now wide behind the cage as it's tapped there by Mike Gold. Along the boards, bodies starting to connect a bit. 
Canisius will break out, however. It's stolen away by St. Francis's Chavetta. And Chavetta will come away with it at center, and he's got an opportunity here. Dances around a man. Chavetta shot. He scores! <laughs> Sam Chavetta picked it off in the neutral zone, danced around his man, picked his corner. 1-0 St. Francis. Oh, that was a fantastic play. We were waiting for... We've been seeing those bounces on both ends all game long, and finally he's able to pick it up and, you know, and just make the most of it, just gets it behind the glove side of the Canisius goalie and gets the first goal. It's a big start for Franny's. Sam Chavetta opens the scoring here for St. Francis. That'll be his third goal on the season. He leads the team now in goals and points with five points as well. And they've got another opportunity sent to the slot and just missing the stick of Mahoney were the Red Raiders. Now ice opens up here as Canisius brings it with speed. Nice move to the slot and now a shot comes right on. Save made by Walzak. I would have rather seen the skater, let me try to get his name real quick, number 11 who is uh, Pushing away, I, I would have rather seen French just take it to the net and try to shoot it himself. Instead, he passes it back. It allows the defense for St. Francis to get back, and you get a good shot, but it's from farther away, and I think the goalie's more set for it. Sometimes the selflessness, not what you need on the ice on those fast break opportunities. Canisius has it inside St. Francis territory. Battling along the wall was Luke Braun. It comes back to the point and still kept in by Braun. They still have it along the wall. Now Braun will send it down to the face-off dot where it goes off of a Canisius glove and coming away with it here is St. Francis for a moment and winning the puck battle in the corner is Kirkpatrick. Sean Kirkpatrick tips it off the boards. Canisius will come away with it. Now Kirkpatrick will send it to the point held in by Canisius' Stouffer who sends it along the boards all the way to the far corner where Kirkpatrick will slide over to make the play there as well. Out to center, pass is intercepted for a moment. Team's not able to get too much puck possession on the breakouts, especially for St. Francis so far. However, all they needed was one opportunity. There's a shot for Canisius, save made, and the whistle goes as it gets caught up in the equipment of Brendan Walzak as we're under a minute to go from Harbor Center. 1-0 St. Francis. Well, I think if the score stays it, for until the next 54 seconds, both teams have a lot to go to the locker room with, both positive and negatives. Obviously, St. Francis, he had that goal. Canisius, he got some offensive pressure. But I think uh, it's just about puck possession and keeping a rhythm on offense. Canisius scored the opening goal in the last meeting between these two. St. Francis takes the first one in this one after St. Francis won the game last weekend. Red Raiders on the breakout. A whiffed pass will go and bounce around in the neutral zone. Now Canisius will have it on the breakout through center. And controlling the puck is Daigler. He'll send it inside Red Raider territory. Hanging on for a whistle is Walzak to give his team a breather. 30 seconds to go in the period. Of course, uh, game before this was uh, Iroquois Alden and West Seneca East. And Iroquois Alden won that one pretty handily. Uh, I know you saw them a few weeks ago. They had that tie with Williamsville South, but Iroquois all is seemingly coming into their own this season. They'll be a good team to watch down the stretch indeed. West Seneca East on the wrong end of a couple blowouts in the last seven days. We hope to see them bounce back, regroup as a team, and build as still a long season ahead. Nothing that you won't look back on later in the season and say, remember when we lost those two blowouts? Now we're a dominant team. We've seen that across high school hockey, professional hockey, college hockey. Teams find their path halfway through a season. We hope to see that from the Trojans. Under 20 seconds to go here from Harbor Center. Canisius will have it below their own cage. Time for one last rush up the ice. And a long stretch pass ahead will be knocked down at neutral ice by St. Francis. They'll just send it back into Crusader territory. And that'll do it for the opening 17 of play. 1-0 for St. Francis off the lone goal from Sam Chavetta. Jack, I, th I think we saw a period that two teams can certainly, this is what a rivalry game should look like. A little bit of physicality, plenty of scoring chances. You saw a goal, good saves. 
and I think these teams have a lot to go over in the locker room. We'll go over a few things as well and see you on the other side of this intermission break. It's the end of the first period, 1-0 St. Francis. You're watching Federation High School Hockey on Western New York Athletics. When it's time to sell your home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com, ranked the number one real estate site for sellers. A few clicks will show you the sales price you can expect for your home. We can get you the most money in the quickest amount of time because we know where the local buyers are and how to reach them. So if it's time to sell your home, visit howardhanna.com today and we'll match you with a local Howard Hanna agent to sell your home fast. I love being home. If you've been injured in an auto accident, large or small, call 681-4088. RES Physical Medicine and Rehab right away. If you are in pain or just sore, don't take chances. Call RES today and take advantage of their 24 to 48 hour appointment pledge. With no co-pays, RES will help navigate the confusing world of no fault insurance with you so you can concentrate on getting better. 681-4088, RES Physical Medicine and Rehab. The most important call you can make after an auto accident. problems. Don't delay care. We're here for you. Western New York Immediate Care provides quick, quality care for non-emergent injuries and illnesses. Go to WNYimmediatecare.com for more information. 300 Level Media is a locally owned and operated multi-purpose media company right here in Western New York. You'll find us everywhere covering the Bills, Sabres, Buttes, Bisons, Big Four Basketball, local college sports, and much more. Our staff offers a variety of media services, from video production, live event coverage, audio broadcasts, professional voiceovers, camera operation, and videography. Visit www.300levelmedia.com or give us a call at 716-427-2600. This is 300 Level Media. See, so new car? Forget about it. How about home? Forget about it. Does it get good rates? Forget about it. And you're saying there's no problem too big for this guy? Forget about it. Oh, this is Johnny, the guy we've been talking about. Johnny, it's Paul Wolf. Mr. Wolf, it's nice to meet you. Thank you for the invite. Not a problem. It's Paul, not Mr. Wolf. Oh, sorry, Paul. Johnny. Forget about it. For all your insurance needs, call 835-WOLF and Forget Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our Buffalo office today for an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs.
We welcome you back to KeyBank Rink, Lecom Har Harbor Center in downtown Buffalo. Jack Cruiser joined by Francis Beck. Francis, it's a one nothing hockey game going into the second period. What can Canisius do to tie things up here in period number two? I, I, if I'm Canisius, I know as crazy as this sounds, you just stick to your game plan. Obviously, you want to clean up things a little bit in your defensive end, but you had a good game plan going. You get plenty of chances on the St. Francis net. And uh, you were doing a lot of good things. I say stick to your game plan. Don't panic. And, uh, you know, just keep believing in yourself. And I think a bounce will just eventually go your way. St. Francis on the other side. They find themselves up one nothing. They're riding a two-game win streak. Their last game, a win against this same Canisius team. What do you think they got to do to add on to that lead and maybe clean up a bit of their own play in period number two? I, I think it starts on the defensive end. Their goalie, Walzak, bailed them out multiple times. There were some bad bounces, pucks off defensemen that went towards the goalie that easily could have went in. They got to clean that stuff up. They got to get rid of rebounds. And if they can do that, maybe add another goal, I, I, they would be, they're in pretty good shape uh, these next 34 minutes. Walzak with a 940 save percentage entering tonight. He stopped all 10 shots that he faced. In the opening frame, St. Francis only mustering seven. However, the one that counted was off the stick of Sam Chavetta. He gives St. Francis a 1-0 lead at the first intermission. We'll have period number two and much more on the other side of this break. You're watching Western New York Athletics. When it's time to sell your home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com. Ranked the number one real estate site for sellers. A few clicks will show you the sales price you can expect for your home. We can get you the most money in the quickest amount of time because we know where the local buyers are and how to reach them. So if it's time to sell your home, visit howardhanna.com today and we'll match you with a local Howard Hanna agent to sell your home fast. I love being home. If you've been injured in an auto accident, large or small, call 681-4088. RES Physical Medicine and Rehab right away. If you are in pain or just sore, don't take chances. Call RES today and take advantage of their 24 to 48 hour appointment pledge. With no co-pays, RES will help navigate the confusing world of no-fault insurance with you, so you can concentrate on getting better. 681-4088, RES Physical Medicine and Rehab. The most important call you can make after an auto accident. worse problems. Don't delay care. We're here for you. Western New York Immediate Care provides quick, quality care for non-emergent injuries and illnesses. Go to WNYimmediatecare.com for more information. Is he a new car? Forget about it. How about home? Forget about it. Does he get good rates? Forget about it. And you're saying there's no problem too big for this guy? Forget about it. Oh, this is Johnny, the guy we've been talking about. Johnny, this is Paul Wolf. Mr. Wolf, it's nice to meet you. Thank you for the invite. Not a problem. It's Paul, not Mr. Wolf. Oh, sorry, Paul. Johnny, forget about it. For all your insurance needs, call 835 Wolf. And.
We're back at Harbor Center Key Bank rink here for period number two between Canisius and St. Francis. The Frannies jumped out to a 1-0 lead late in the first period thanks to Sam Chavetta getting his fourth goal on the season, leading the team in scoring and points. Chavetta is so far for the Red Raiders. We'll look to see how these two teams bounce back in period number two after what was a sloppy first period, especially through the neutral zone. Seemed like neither team could really get solid breakouts going, but on the other side of that, both teams playing well defensively through the mid zone. Yeah, they uh, didn't want to let their opponent get any chances, which I don't blame them, especially in a rivalry game like this. Each side knows what kind of forwards they have, and they're just trying to muddy up the middle and not let anything uh, easy happen for the other team. Now, if you're St. Francis, I'm sure you're not looking at what happened last game, but it was Canisius who led 1-0 after the first period. They end up dropping the game in the latter two periods as St. Francis outscored them 3-1 in the second and third periods combined. 10-7, the shots in the first period for the Crusaders. They'll switch ends. Canisius now going left to right. St. Francis right to left on your screen. Ready to get underway with period number two. It'll be Luke Braun in the faceoff. Circle for Canisius going up against Alec Bosquet. Bosquet will win it back into his own end. It'll go all the way below his, below his own goal line. And Chavetta will send it to the near corner. Antonelli settles it and waits. Chavetta, Antonelli. Movement comes for St. Francis, and they'll send it off the wall on the far end. Canisius will pick it off and take it the other way with Schaefer. Schaefer sends it far below the cage, and it rings around the boards. Poking it back down there is Canisius, and Braun battles for it below the net. Braun in the corner. Set it free. The cycle's on for the Crusaders. Now poked away nicely by Antonelli of the St. Francis defense, and he'll re regroup behind his own net. Through center, Canisius picks it off. They'll come back the other way. The Crusaders dance into the line with Braun. Braun left it there for his man, Eberhard, but Eberhard's shot gets blocked, and it bounces out to center. Canisius will regroup and send it back in. Canisius picks off another pass on the breakout for St. Francis. It looks like they're going for the home run stretch passes from their own goal line all the way out through the neutral zone as they can't seem to muster anything going in the middle third. Canisius will have it in their own end. Stouffer almost lost control of it there as Wicca came in flying for St. Francis, but Stouffer ends up getting it out and inside St. Francis territory down below the net. Pops to the point. Stouffer steps up to keep it in play. However, St. Francis has it. A three-on-one opportunity, make it a three-on-two, and they can't get the pass across onto the tape of Mateo Torres as he was there being the trailer on the three-on-one chance for St. Francis. And Mateo, and Mateo had great patience on that rush not to go early in to the zone. Cameron Lopez comes away with the puck, sends it in front. It gets knocked away. Keeping it in, however, are the Red Raiders. It goes below the net. And here's Bryson Roberts poking it to the corner. Canisius will take it away. Stouffer with pressure on him. Torres will send it all the way around the boards to the near side with speed flying in and getting leveled along the boards was Andrew Allen. Allen still battling along the boards there. He lost his twig. It was Eli Noble who laid him out, the junior. And Canisius now will send it out to center. It'll miss a stick, go all the way down. This will be an icing. Yo, Yo Jack, we haven't seen a whole lot of pits. I was at the uh, Amherst Will South game Thursday night at Northtown Center. Right from the get-go there, and you had the fans out from both sides. I think there were probably 20 hits in just the first period. It was that kind of game, but you know, despite this being rivalry, it hasn't been too physical, at least on the hits end. It's been fairly clean on that, and they stayed pretty much out of the penalty box as well. That's got to be instruction from Sam Belcito and Jack Panic as well, the head coaches today. Don't get out of position. Don't go for the big hit and leave an open chance. We saw even on this last three-on-one break for St. Francis, it all started because Stouffer stepped up in the offensive zone, trying to keep a puck in play, maybe putting a body on a man a bit too much instead of just getting back, retreating, and setting up defensively. Below the cage, Canisius has it. 
Austin McMullen battling, and now he hits the deck as two St. Francis players were there to bump him down. Canisius will send it back in, and the physicality picks up inside the St. Francis zone. Down below the goal line, St. Francis will have it. Through center, it's picked off in the neutral zone by Canisius. Pinballs around, and the Crusaders will send it back in, trying to go for a change. They didn't want to touch it in fear of a too-many-men penalty. So St. Francis will now send it in as it goes off a foot. And Canisius will regroup here with Ryan Spies. Spies send it through the neutral zone for Evan Healy. Healy tapped it ahead. Big open ice hit there as it was Luke Braun colliding with Jacob Krosta just inside the Canisius blue line, and a shot is easily handled there by Brendan Walzak. All right, well, this is what you want if you're Canisius. You're getting the puck back to the Franny's net, and now here's your chance. You're inside the Red Raiders zone. Let's set something up, put something together, and maybe get a couple shots on that. Face off one by the Crusaders. It's poked back to the point. Adam Trubish is there. Trubish's point shot goes just high and wide. Sending it in front were the Crusaders, but it's St. Francis coming away with it. Passes Arendt, and now picking it up through the neutral zone with speed is Roeder. Daniel Roeder for St. Francis has it into the corner. Below the net, Roeder turns and tries to go for the short side wraparound. Couldn't do it, though, as it rolls all the way out to center. Chevetta will play it off the wall. Picking it off there is Canisius, having to check up back on side of the Crusaders. There's a shot that comes just to the right of the cage. Canisius gets the rebound, however, and they'll send it in again. That one deflected in the slot. Walzak will grab it and hang on for a whistle. one nothing. We stand. 12.38 to go in the second period of play. Again, great job by Canisius. They're just... They're keeping that pressure on. Great turnaround these past couple minutes. Canisius wins the faceoff inside St. Francis territory. It goes to Schaefer, who rings it around the boards into the far corner. It's the Crusaders coming away with it with Sean Keane momentarily. Keane still battles along the boards. And it rolls to the near corner now. St. Francis not able to get it out. It's sent right back in by Devin Schaefer. Back to Keene along the far boards. And now Chevetta will take it himself and backhand it out into Canisius territory. It'll go right on the net. And Mike Gold will settle it down, negating the icing call. However, St. Francis is down there on the forecheck. Puck on the side of the net is covered for a whistle. So we saw a bit of physicality pick up. A few moments ago, some hits in open ice and especially along the boards, but not too much open ice out there to get the puck moving for either squad as it's been, again, mostly Canisius in the offensive end so far in this second period as it was in the first period. However, the only shot that counted was the one from Sam Chavetta giving his team a 1-0 lead, and we'll have another face-off inside Red Raider territory. Yeah, Canisius uh, just simply... Takes it down the ice. Try. I guess they were just looking for that faceoff back in the Red Raiders zone, and that's what they're going to get coming up here. Luke Braun on the draw. Pushes his man forward for the winger to come in and clear it. Back to the point. There's a shot that gets blocked. Stouffer is there trying to keep it in play. It'll be St. Francis sending it out through center into the Canisius territory. Stouffer stops, puts the wheels on, tried to make a move. It got stolen away, and a tough angled shot from below the goal line comes all the way out to center for St. Francis and they'll regroup to the neutral zone. In his own end, here's Lopez. Now off the wall. Coming back from the neutral zone is Mateo Torres, who will ring it around the boards, and Canisius is going to get possession again. Or at least I thought they were going to. It's set all the way out inside Canisius territory now, and that'll be an icing. So Canisius will have another face-off inside St. Francis territory. You know, I think that shot from, uh, I forget who was the St. Francis skater on goal, I think that took Gold by surprise. He wasn't really, ex and no one takes a shot from that angle, and, I, I, you know, it wasn't going to go in, but you could tell uh, he was a little uncomfortable with the puck there by his legs. Face off in the offensive end for Canisius. They win the draw. Stouffer sends a point shot that gets off the pad. Kick save for Walzak into the corner. St. Francis turns with it. Kirkpatrick getting muscled around below the goal line. Kirkpatrick will come away with it with Noah Albano. Canisius turns and fires that one right back in with Austin McMullen. McMullen will send it 
towards the front of the net. St. Francis clears. Out to center, it goes off of a stick. Now Kanisha steps up, trying to keep play on the right side of your screen. Crusaders will do so well, and they've got possession again now along the far side. Turning with it here is Nolan French. Pass it to the slot as it goes right through everybody and back to the point. And poked ahead. Here's an opportunity for St. Francis as if, if they've got the wheels. Austin McMullen will win the race. However, the icing is called on the no-touch icing league here. If that's the NHL, that icing's getting waved off, getting waved off as McMullen beat his man down there. Yeah, and you saw... Uh you know, just great job by St. Francis getting a chance there. Man, that puck was very close to being deflected in. Uh, again, just like the first period, lots of chances. They're, mo they're moving the puck in, just can't get the guy in the right spot. St. Francis wins the defensive zone draw. And they'll get it out to center with the big defenseman, Max Methane. Methane will carry it into the offensive territory, get it down to the corner. Methane all the way down below the cage. Battles hard with the Canisius defenders. Two players from each team battling for the puck. It'll be St. Francis coming away with it for a moment as it rolls to the far corner. Methane's there still battling for the puck down low. Now Canisius will get it away. And they'll regroup here with Roland Richards. Richards will play it off the boards behind his own net. For Ryan Spies. Spies gets leveled. Stepping into his man was Daniel Roeder. Chavetta comes to the slot and he tries to keep it in play. While he's on the ground, he pokes it to the sidewall where St. Francis will lose possession as it was Zach Dimitrov who tried to send it below the net. However, an icing call will bring it all the way back down inside Kanisha's territory. 9.13 to go in the second period. Franny's on top, 1-0. Yeah, what an effort by Shavetta. He's out on the ice. You, you wouldn't have thought he was. The way he was playing, he, you would have thought he was still on his two feet, but and he almost kept it in as well. So great effort by him. St. Francis will win the offensive zone draw, trying to send it to the front of the net. There was Kyle Wicca. Goes to the corner. Battling for it here is Canisius, and they'll try to clear it. However, they can't. St. Francis will step up and keep it in the offensive end, and it rolls to the slot where it's then set out by Canisius. Coming away with it here is Aaron Eberhard, who will send it inside Red Raider territory. Down below the goal line, Andrew Allen will turn with it. Had to slow up before he got leveled in the corner as the big man for Canisius, Aaron Eberhard, the sophomore, Almost laid him out in the corner. He had to slow up his speed before getting hit there. Now St. Francis through the neutral zone. Four on three break the other way. Here are the Red Raiders trying to get it to the slot was Kyle Wicca. He couldn't do so. Now a three on one opportunity the other way. Here comes Luke Braun on the right wing. Braun takes a shot. Save made there by Walzak. The rebound goes out to the corner. Now out the other way, St. Francis has it as ice opens up a bit here in the second period of play. Canisius, however, gets back defensively, and Liam McCarty will clear out to center. Trying to tap it ahead is Nolan French, and French will go in after it into the left corner. Now rung around the boards to the near side point. St. Francis will clear it out. Laying his man out was Liam McCarty along the boards. Now Canisius will have a chance as both teams go for a change. Long stretch pass ahead, tips off the stick of Eli Noble and into the corner, Noble will battle for it with Jacob Krosta. Krosta killing as much time as he can down there. If he could, he'd hang on to it for the rest of the game with his team up 1-0. Now Krosta will come away with it. Along the half wall and getting it out to center is St. Francis. However, picking it off defensively is Max Methane. Coming the other way here is Torres. Torres along the wing. Down below the goal line, referee gets mixed up in there, and that causes the puck to pop free for Canisius. Now back to the point. There's a shot easily kicked away by Gold. Francis down low with Lopez, almost stole it away. Lopez will get the puck here for a moment, but he couldn't keep control of it, and the pass to the far boards is an errant one. St. Francis will get possession again at their own blue line. Jacob Crosto will send a pass that goes off of a leg and inside Canisius territory now. Crusaders turning with it along the near corner, battling down there and putting his man on the ground is Noah Albano. And St. Francis will say thank you very much, and they almost had possession there, but falling to his knees was Josh Monaco. Now Monaco has it in his own end and will send it to his defensive partner in Shea Kirkpatrick. Monaco. Monaco gets tripped up. This will be a penalty. 
as the goaltender heads, and now bodies fly at mid at the center ice all over the place. Canisius, however, is going to touch this puck up as the delayed icing will get whistled down, and a power play coming up here again for St. Francis. You know, <clears throat> you know, Jack, you mentioned, I heard who it was holding the puck in the corner, and you kind of joke that he kind of wants to hold it for the rest of the game. I hate to say it, but that's kind of the way St. Francis has kind of been playing these past couple minutes. They're not being the aggressor Canisius is, and they're just kind of holding on for dear life, just kind of watching the clock. You cannot do that. It's way too early to do that, especially in a one nothing game. Here's an opportunity for St. Francis to add to their lead, but Canisius will clear on the penalty kill. And putting on the four check on the penalty are the Crusaders. Here's an open opportunity. There's a shot that goes just wide right to the cage. Down below the goal line, Canisius with one man down there as it was Jacob Crosta on the two-on-one opportunity. Or I beg your pardon, for Canisius, it was Sean Keane who came down with it. Shot turned away as Luke Braun had an opportunity from the slot. No problem for Walzak, however. one nothing. we stand. Just under six minutes to play in the second period. This power play, however, not very powerful for St. Francis thus far as Canisius does a fine job of pushing it to the corners. Now St. Francis has it, and they can set it up along the far wall. Pass to the slot. There's a shot. Great block there as diving on the ground was a Crusader. Pass comes to the front as it goes off the leg of gold. And now below the boards. Big hit along the boards. That'll be a penalty. And St. Francis is going to get an opportunity with a minute three to go on the first penalty. They're going to have a five on three here. Yeah, that hit was just too high. Uh, it, it in the head and neck area along the boards. The refs are going to call it every time. Trubish is the man for Canisius who will head to the box. Officials probably chatting whether or not they want to give this a bit more than just two minutes here. Just a minor penalty for cross-checking, they say. And that's a little bit of a break for Canisius. Even though you're down two men, that could have been a lot worse. 61 minutes worth of penalties in the last time these two played. However, in this game, just three penalties being called. Two, however, on Canisius right away as we've got a five on three for St. Francis. At the circle, now up top, here's Chavetta. Surveys the defense, sends it to the far circle. There's a shot, save made by Gold. Max Taylor thought he had one there with a clear shot from the far circle. Canisius' bench lets their goaltender Gold hear it as it flies out of play and another faceoff. This one to the left of Mike Gold. St. Francis will set up after winning the draw here. It goes back to the point for Chavetta. Chavetta to the near side. Shot, they score! Bryson Roberts buries it on the one tee. St. Francis up by two. You know, that reminds me of what the Sabres like to do in power play. He looked like Olofsson or Eichel before. He just had him set up at the top of the circle. He winds up and just powers it in. That's huge for St. Francis. They take advantage of having being two men up, and they get the goal 2 nothing. Franny's. That is huge in a game like this. Chavetta gets his second point on the day as it's the man who had the game-winning goal last time these two teams played. Bryson Roberts gets his third on the year. It actually ties him with Chavetta now for the lead in goals as they entered today tied at two goals apiece. Now they're tied three goals apiece for the lead for St. Francis in scoring, and they've still got a power play here now as the first one goes away with the goal. Five on four for St. Francis now, and they'll set up in the offensive end. Pass to the slot and not able to clear it as Canisius. Now back to the point St. Francis will move down to the goal mouth, and the shot is set away, and the puck comes flying out and out of play. Are they going to call? I guess they're not going to call that. that. That was very dangerous to being a delay of game. I'm honestly surprised why it wasn't called delay of game in his defensive end. He just turned and fired it straight out of play. Didn't hit anything, I didn't think. I mean, it was a bouncing puck, but still, it kind of, I mean, it didn't seem like it was hit. Under, other than that, there was nothing that put it out of play. Out to the slot. There's a shot that's turned away by Gold, and Canisius will clear it out to center. And getting scruffy behind the play were two players on the far boards. As it looked like it was Alex Bosquet, who got a bit feisty. Back in the offensive zone, and a big open ice hit. Here's another penalty coming up as bodies start flying. 
St. Francis is going to get another five on three opportunity. Wow, that, that's. Coach Milzito has got to be livid right now. It's the last thing you can do when you're playing your rivals, keep taking penalties. Another two minute advantage, especially since you just gave up a goal. Luke Braun will head to the box and join Adam Trubish for another five on three chance for St. Francis with an opportunity to add on their already standing two nothing lead. Canisius sends out Luke Daigler for the faceoff. However, St. Francis will win it back, and Chavetta will set up and quarterback the power play. Now Roberts has it. Back for Chavetta. Chavetta to the right side in the circle. It's Taylor. Pass down low. Now back up to the circle for Taylor. Taylor sends it right on goal. Save made. Rebound. It's in the slot. And turning now in the corner with it is Roberts. Bryson Roberts slows it down, sends it across ice to Max Taylor. Taylor to Roberts in the near face-off dot. Roberts sends it now to the far hash marks for Taylor. Taylor down low below the goal line. Centered shot, save made. Nice way to read that one for Mike Gold, and his team lets him hear it. Your best penalty killer has to be your goaltender, and he bailed him out there again. First penalty has expired. We're now at five on four as Luke Braun sits in the penalty box for a minute remaining. Max Taylor will skate it into the offensive end and send it below the cage. Schaefer is there for Canisius. They'll try to kill more time here below their own net. However, St. Francis comes away with it. Taylor to Chavetta. Chavetta looking for Roberts. We'll give it to him. Canisius wisely comes out to guard Roberts quite closely. Chavetta takes the point shot that goes off the side of the net. Comes right back to Chavetta along the half wall. Tries to force a pass to the slot. That gets broken up by Roland Richards and cleared by the Crusaders. 20 seconds remain in the power play for St. Francis. They got one on this trip to the power play. I'm sure if you're Jack Panic, you'd like him to add another one as he got two five-on-three opportunities. But now just 10 seconds remain. One final rush on the man advantage. Cutting to the slot and making the move is Roberts, and he couldn't bury it, but danced around his man to get the opportunity. And St. Francis will have one more chance here. And the power play has expired. Shot gets blocked, and Canisius will bring it the other way. Fresh legs for the Crusaders. Keeping it in play is St. Francis, though. Here is Josh Monaco. He got hit. It comes to the front of the net. It's still sitting in the crease. Finally covering up is Michael. Then we've got pushing and shoving after the whistle as a stick was inside Mike Gold's pad there for a moment. We've got equipment on the ice, bodies being shoved, and the official gets a control of it. And I'm sure that's a lot on the Canisius frustration over those back-to-back -back back -to -back -to -back penalties and giving up that goal, uh, something you know Crusaders do not want to do whatsoever. And then, you know, of course, they kill off the penalty, and St. Franny's has another great chance, and... Uh, Luckily, it stopped, but you could tell Canisius is very frustrated. Well, it looks like we're going to have a power play for Canisius here as a Red Raider was sent to the penalty box after the whistle. This would be Canisius's first power play of the game if that is what they're getting, and Jack Panic will get the explanation from the referee now. I'm sure Mike Gold would appreciate the play being in the other end of the <laughs> other end of the <laughs> rink. Take for a at little least a break. couple minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Gold being tested here. 15 shots now for St. Francis through almost two full periods with a minute 53 to go. It'll be Connor Saichaki taking a seat in the sin bin for two minutes. Canisius will set up on the power play. It'll be Nolan French in the faceoff dot for the Crusaders. And French will win it back. It comes to the point. Eberhard to his defensive partner in Braun. Now to the far boards and Braun up top. Braun gets it over for Stravino. Stravino couldn't corral it. St. Francis will clear. There you hear a 10 minute misconduct as well being issued to Connor Sachaki. 
Two minutes for unsportsmanlike conduct. Probably something he said on the ice. Got him that penalty on the 10 minute as well. Puck rolls to the corner. St. Francis will fire it out and off the boards. With just over a minute remaining in the second period of play, St. Francis up 2-0. This is high school federation hockey on the Western New York Athletics. Dancing through the neutral zone and bringing it into the offensive end is Canisius. Pass to the slot goes off of a leg as Luke Braun thought he had something there. Now Braun will almost get it there. Great defensive play there from Max Taylor and St. Francis clears and they'll go for a change. Open ice hit behind the play. No one saw it, but Canisius is French got laid out in open ice in the neutral zone. French dances around his man, passes the, pass to the slot. There's a shot that gets turned away. Another shot save made. Back to the point, Canisius has it set up with 30 seconds to go. Shot from the point goes wide. French has it along the half wall. French to Braun, back to French. Wasn't ready for it. 20 seconds to go. There's a shot from French that missed everybody. Goes to the corner. Now the half wall, Canisius will keep it in. And now backhanded out, but not out. It's held in by Braun. Far circle shot save made. Now below the cage, it's sent to the front. Stolen away by St. Francis. They turn and fire it, and that'll do it for period number two. Two nothing is our score. Seven seconds remain in the penalty that will give Canisius a power play in the third period. You know, I, I, I for that first half of that second period, it seemed like the Red Raiders were sleepwalking. And then all of a sudden, Canisius started taking penalties, and they suddenly came alive. That power play did a fantastic job. They got the goal, and uh, you know it just lit a spark. And now they have the momentum going into this third period. You got to wonder if the ice may be tilted a bit more, because in both periods, it was the left side of the rink that we had the majority of play in. In the first period, it was a lot of Canisius. In this previous period, a lot of St. Francis. But Three penalties and three power plays for St. Francis will do that for you. We'll take an intermission and we'll be back with a breakdown of that second period and more coming up right after this. Don't go anywhere. You're watching High School Federation Hockey on the Western New York Athletics. When it's time to sell your home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com. Ranked the number one real estate site for sellers. A few clicks will show you the sales price you can expect for your home. We can get you the most money in the quickest amount of time because we know where the local buyers are and how to reach them. So if it's time to sell your home, visit howardhanna.com today and we'll match you with a local Howard Hanna agent to sell your home fast. I love being home. If you've been injured in an auto accident, large or small, call 681-4088. RES Physical Medicine and Rehab right away. If you are in pain or just sore, don't take chances. Call RES today and take advantage of their 24 to 48 hour appointment pledge. With no copays, RES will help navigate the confusing world of no-fault insurance with you, so you can concentrate on getting better. 681-4088. RES Physical Medicine and Rehab. The most important call you can make after an auto accident. To worse problems. Don't delay care. We're here for you. Western New York Immediate Care provides quick, quality care for non emergent injuries and illnesses. Go to WNYImmediateCare.com for more information. 300 Level Media is a locally owned and operated multi purpose media company right here in Western New York. You'll find us everywhere covering the Bills, Sabres, Buttes, Bisons, Big Four Basketball, local college sports, and much more. Our staff offers a variety of media services, from video production, live event coverage, audio broadcasts, professional voiceovers, camera operation, and videography. Visit www.300levelmedia.com or give us a call at 716-427-2600. This is 300 Level Media. 
Does he do car? Forget about it. How about home? Forget about it. Does he get good rates? Forget about it. And you're saying there's no problem too big for this guy? Forget about it. Johnny, the guy we've been talking about. Johnny, Paul Wolf. Hey, Mr. Wolf, it's nice to meet you. Thank you for the invite. Not a problem. It's Paul, not Mr. Wolf. Oh, sorry, Paul. Johnny, forget about it. For all your insurance needs, call 835 Wolf and. Forget about it! Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our Buffalo office today for an efficient personal approach for all of your transportation needs.
We welcome you back into Lecom Harbor Center Key Bank Rink, where we're at the second intermission between St. Francis and Canisius. The Red Raiders on top of the Crusaders by a score of two to zero. Francis Beck joins me, Jack Cruiser, for this contest today. Francis, what do you expect out of period number three? Well, I be we better see a lot more fight from the Canisius Crusaders. I thought they, you know, really kind of sleepwalked through the latter half of that second period. You know, they took a bunch of penalties. They're down 2 nothing. They got to show energy right from the get-go in the third. All right. Well, we'll be on the other side of this short break just in a few minutes with the final frame of play from downtown Buffalo and Harbor Center. This is High School Hockey on Western New York Athletics. <laughs> Avoiding care can lead to worse problems. Don't delay care. We're here for you. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our Buffalo office today for an efficient, personal approach for all of your transportation needs. When it's time to sell your home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com, ranked the number one real estate site for sellers. A few clicks will show you the sales price you can expect for your home. We can get you the most money in the quickest amount of time because we know where the local buyers are and how to reach them. So if it's time to sell your home, visit howardhanna.com today and we'll match you with a local Howard Hanna agent to sell your home fast. We're back from Harbor Center, just about ready to get underway with period number three between Canisius and St. Francis. Francis, we were just saying how Canisius has to get an early one in this third period if they want a chance to come back, right? Yeah, early, and if they don't, St. Francis will just clamp down and play defense the whole time. You talked about St. Francis wanted to hold that puck earlier in the second period. They'll be doing it all third period long. And I really won't have much of a problem with it if they try to. I'm sure it will bring a problem to Sam Belsito and the Canisius Crusaders as they look to come back from a 2-0 deficit here in the third period. They had the lead one time throughout this season series between these two. It was the opening goal of the game, and then St. Francis never looked back. They've got the next what now is five goals scored in this series as the Crusaders have it below their own cage as we're underway with period number three. Adam Trubish will skate through the neutral zone. It goes now back into Canisius' territory as it's poked in by St. Francis's Kyle Wicca. Canisius not able to get it out. Franny's put on the pressure. Crusaders will use the near wall with Sean Keene. Keene couldn't collect it. Now Braun will leave it for Keene. And it's sent out through the neutral zone for Everhard. Everhard takes a shot that goes just wide. Everhard follows his shot to the corner and the near wall where it's battled for by Sean Keene. Keene comes away with it. Keene had it poked off his stick by Mahoney. Mahoney came out to center and he lost his twig. That'll be a penalty for slashing, it looks like. Yeah, penalty for slashing, not the way you want to start of your Canisius. You had trouble with penalties in the second period and now you're gonna start off with more in the third. So Sean Keene will take a seat for two minutes as St. Francis will get another opportunity on the power play. They've got one goal tonight on the five-on-three power play. However, they haven't converted on their numerous five-on-four chances. Back to the point as the Frannies set up their power play with Roberts playing catch on the far side. Shot goes high. 
Taylor has it. Max Taylor skates to the point, down low the pass goes. Pass out in front, there's a save by Gold, and it's rung around the boards and clearing it is Canisius. Coming out is Walzak to leave it for his defenseman. Where Bryson Roberts will send it up the wing. St. Francis looking to create the opportunities on the power play here off the breakout as they're in their own end. Putting on the forecheck here for Canisius is Daigler. And it forces St. Francis to regroup again. That's a nice job on the forecheck on the PK by Daigler to kill off a few more seconds, forcing St. Francis to go back. And now they've got it with Shavetta. Shavetta, who's been all over the score sheet tonight, sends it to the near wall with Taylor. Taylor up top. There's a shot from Raymond. That goes off a leg. It rolls right to Shavetta. He had the opportunity. And Chavetta couldn't keep it in. Now it is held in as Chavetta got his stick on it. He's battling along the wall. Pass down low, looking to create an opportunity. Threw it off the goaltender again as it looked like St. Francis had that one. And a big hit at open ice as Roberts hits the deck. Ryan Spies was there who just stood and ate the check. And his man went down. It looked like Spies was just absorbing the body check there as his man goes down on the ground in Roberts. And now Canisius will reset on the PK with under 30 to go on the penalty. French will send it cross ice into St. Francis territory. Great penalty kill so far by the Crusaders. St. Francis gets it inside Canisius territory with under 10 to go as the clock ticks away on the penalty, and that'll do it as the puck squirts into St. Francis territory. That's the kind of momentum swing you need if you're Canisius after taking an early penalty. Still 14 minutes to go in this third period. Canisius down by two through the neutral zone and sending it into Canisius territory was Allen. Going after it here is Mahoney. Mahoney hits the deck as he got hit along the boards, and he's still down below the cage. And now the whistle goes as St. Francis touches it up. I didn't see necessarily what happened down there. Looked like Mahoney was just going for a puck battle along the boards. But he's still laying on the on the ice there below the cage, and they get the trainer out there to tend to him. Looks like he's holding that left knee of his, bringing it to his chest. So I don't know what he. Maybe it's his side, but we do see <coughs> movement. So that is good. We'll take a brief intermission here, and we'll rejoin you on the other side as we'll have an update on this injury and more from the third period from Harbor Center. You're watching Western New York Athletics. Avoiding care can lead to worse problems. Don't delay care. We're here for you. Western New York Immediate Care provides quick, quality care for non-emergent injuries and illnesses. Go to WNYImmediateCare.com for more information. Logistics Plus is a global transportation provider headquartered in Erie, PA, with locations worldwide, including right here in Western New York. Logistics Plus is consistently recognized as a fast-growing transportation and logistics company, great supply chain partner, top freight broker, leading project cargo manager, and a great place to work. With a strong passion for excellence, our 500-plus employees put the plus in logistics. Call our Buffalo office today for an efficient, personal approach for all of your transportation needs. We're back with more from Harbor Center. 2-0 lead for St. Francis over Canisius as Ryan Mahoney gets help off the ice. Looks like he's favoring that left leg as the trainer helps him skate to the bench. And what we would assume, he heads to the locker room for some repairs. Looks like he's all right, though. Just a, a minor injury, we hope. Face Looks off. like his left leg, something with that. He wasn't, he was favoring his right coming off the ice. There you go. Yeah, strike that, reverse it, what I said. <laughs> Favoring the right. Problems on the left. Here's Alex French as he takes it inside the t uh, territory. Beg your pardon, that's Nolan French, rather. Now a three-on-two break the other way, broken up neatly by the Canisius defense. French comes back, circles through the neutral zone, and takes it himself inside St. Francis territory. French below the goal line. Leaves it for his man who swung around there to help him out. And now down below the cage is Liam McCarty. McCarty sends it back to the point. Here's Trubish. Left it along the wall. French goes to the corner after it. 
French leaves it for Noble. Noble turning, set the pass in front. It went right through the legs of McCarty and cleared by the Red Raiders. Good work for Mateo Torres. So we should be seeing in a minute or so that Josh Monaco re-enter the game for St. Francis as he took a 10-minute misconduct late in the second period. Sent in by St. Francis into the far corner. Canisius will whack it away. And it will roll all the way out to center. St. Francis will regroup here with Allen. Allen stepped into his check and he'll get the puck back through the neutral zone. Oh, and losing an edge here was Canisius's Luke Braun as he almost had a break there as it missed the St. Francis defenseman who had stepped up. Now Methane for Canisius. Methane gets tripped up to the neutral zone. No penalty called inside St. Francis territory. Dagler has it. Left it for his man in the slot. Clearing it well is the defenseman Roberts for St. Francis. But an icing will bring it all the way back down. Good start for Canisius after that penalty kill. They're getting a little bit of momentum, getting some shots on net. Right now we're tied 15-15 shots overall in this game. And it's little stuff like that which can build to a goal in a little bit. Now I just noticed that. I guess I hadn't been paying attention too well through the first two periods. Even on an icing, teams can change however they want to. So St. Francis is all right with taking the icing call there off the stick of Roberts. He'll go off the ice for a change. And now the puck is still being battled for along the near wall as bodies hit the deck. St. Francis will get the puck in their own end and now clearing it out to center. And here's an opportunity along the right wing. Sachaki's got it. Shot goes wide as it's steered that way by Gold. Into the corner it goes for Canisius. And the bench, the bench lets him hear it in celebration on the save. Now Canisius has it, regrouping through the neutral zone. It's sent off the wall and poked ahead by the Crusaders inside offensive territory. Now down to the corner. Here's Pappas. Pappas in the corner sends it back to the point. Spies almost lost control of it. Turns and fires it, but it's blocked right there by Chevetta, who eats his check of Sean Keane. St. Francis will try to regroup. And an offsides delayed call will get Canisius to change. St. Francis will try to regroup. Along the near ball, they set wall rather they send it all the way inside Canisius territory and an icing will be called 1045 remaining in the third period of play two nothing Red Raiders yeah in high school Jack uh, and icings both teams can make a change I think it's a safety rule but uh, uh which you know just you know because it's kids still uh, but yeah both teams can make a change on an icing that is fair and that's good to know if you're a player of course because sometimes if you're at your end of your shift and you're stuck in your own end Turn and fire that thing the length of the ice and go off for a change, no problem. Now St. Francis will get it out of their own end. Canisius, however, regroups at their own blue line and will fire it off the wall. It'll drift its way inside Red Raider territory below their own cage. They try to use the wall to break out. Canisius, though, putting on the forecheck. Here's an opportunity the other way for St. Francis. Breaking in over the line is Nolan Albano, and he lost an edge. And we'll have a faceoff to the left of Mike Gold. 10-16 to go in the period. Shots 15 apiece. Things have evened up here a bit as the game has gone on. Canisius, who had fresher legs, at least is what it looked like in the first two periods, now has to set up for a defensive draw. French not able to win it. And Canisius will clear to center. St. Francis forced to regroup. Gold will leave it for the defense and Max Methane. Methane, pump fakes left, will go right and use the man on the wall for the breakout. Pass comes cross ice into the neutral zone. Busting into the zone is Luke Braun. Braun with speed, puts it on his backhand, turns and tried to get the forehand shot off the keeper. Braun will, however, follow it to the far corner now. Braun battling along the boards. will take two Red Raiders to his back as he's got it held along the boards. As we've mentioned before, Franny's will keep it there. Now Canisius pops it free. Pass to the slot, nobody's home, goes off a Red Raider and into the corner. Coming away with it here will be Alex Bosquet. Albano brought it over the line. They have an offside ruling here. Nine and a half to go in the final frame. Nisha's, <clears throat> Nisha's just edging away here, but eventually they do want to get a goal. They don't want to wait till three minutes because then St. Francis will just really clamp down. 
We said entering this period, seems like Canisius had to get an early goal. Well, it's a bit too far gone for that as we're already eight or so minutes into this one. Neutral zone, it pinballs around. St. Francis will have it momentarily. Now taken back by Canisius. Having it poked off, Richards stick are the Crusaders. Richards will backhand it off the wall. St. Francis keeps it in the offensive end and they'll do so again with Roberts who sends it down to the corner. Turning with it here in the corner is Torres. Torres put it against the wall. It pops to the slot. Roberts for Torres as St. Francis sets up offensively. Torres put it down along the boards into the corner. And not able to corral that one was Lopez. Now bringing it out is Canisius. Through the neutral zone, it's sent along the near side and cutting to the middle was Luke Daigler. Daigler left it for his man along the wall who backhands it on goal and it'll be held by Walzak. Shout out to St. Francis for remaining aggressive in this third. He saw in that last one, they had nearly really set up a good offensive set. Uh, of course, Kanish just came up with it at the end. But, uh, you know, shout out to them for being aggressive, which is what you want to do with a two goal lead. As long as we're doing shout outs, I do want to give a shout out to our friend and colleague, Tom Prince. It's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Tom. If I thought you're it was yesterday. In. Oh, was it yesterday? Well, then I take it back, <laughs> Tom. You'll get one next year on air. <laughs> Off the boards, Canisius will have control in their own end, trying to create some offense. Flying into the corner there for St. Francis was Drew Ahmed. He lost it, though, as Canisius will have an opportunity three on three the other way, stopping and turning with it. Are the Crusaders now into the corner? It goes for Healy, and a penalty's coming up here to St. Francis as the Canisius man got hit hard along the wall, and it looks like it'll be Drew Ahmed that'll head to the box. So we may have blood drawn here as the Crusader pops right back up. He threw his gloves and his stick on the ice. Definitely took that one up high, Adam Trubish did. But as a result, we'll have a Canisius power play. Trubish walks himself right off the ice, and he'll head to the room. Ooh, he's a little frustrated there. He threw, I think he threw a glove uh, as he entered the bench. Not too <laughs> happy. And rightfully so, his team down 2 nothing. And seemingly getting outbodied along the boards and in open ice so far in this third period, St. Francis. It'll be a five minute major though as they put five minutes up on the penalty to Drew Ahmed. So here's a beautiful opportunity if you're the Crusaders. This power play, no matter how many goals are scored, will go all the way down till 3.01 on the clock. So you got a real long opportunity on the five on four power play. Canisius, we haven't seen too much of their power play yet tonight. St. Francis though wins the draw and clears right away. Mike Gold corrals it for his defense. Braun will regroup and start the breakout on the power play. Through the neutral zone, French stops, tried to stick handle. It's knocked down through the neutral zone with a high stick. Luke Braun was there, what looked like to be a nice work of hand-eye through the neutral zone as he knocked it down, will bring the face off all the way inside the Canisius end. Ooh, and they, you know what, your Canisius, you don't want to go down there but this is still not time to panic seven and a half minutes left still have four and a half left in this penalty uh, just just be smart with the puck right now don't need to be super aggressive yet and wiping out below the goal line losing an edge was Braun however French skates it away for Canisius looking for the outlet pass to the neutral zone decides to put his head down and take it himself then French loses an edge which gives St. Francis a chance to kill more time on the penalty kill now regrouping is Braun. Braun with open ice in front of him. He'll get it inside the offensive end and set up on the power play at the point. Braun will send it across ice to Eberhard. Up top for Braun. Braun takes a shot right on save made. Goes to the corner. St. Francis will try to clear. However, Eberhard keeps it in along the boards. Eberhard takes a shot that gets blocked. Eberhard turning with a man out on him. Bosquet out there guarding. Now to the near circle. Keen has it. Keen turning as a man came out to play him defensively. Keen tries to catch St. Francis out of position. Nice poke there from number nine in white, Kyle Wicca. A minute and a half killed on the five minute major to Drew Ahmed. Canisius has it and they'll send it below the goal line. McCarty. McCarty left it there. Pass to the front of the net, the shot, and it goes to the slot as it seemed like it was a whiffed shot in the slot right in front of the net. 
Walzak didn't even have to make a save on it as it pops through the neutral zone. St. Francis kills more time. McCarty got squeezed out along the boards, but he got it up ahead for Schaefer, who brings it into the offensive line. Schaefer takes a shot that gets grabbed by Walzak. Three minutes exactly remain on the power play. Six minutes on the nose remain in the contest. Yeah, for any team, a nice job. You can see they're not taking big slaps down the other end. They're just poking it down. Uh, and they're having go, their guys go after loose pucks. Just smart hockey in this penalty kill. A nice work from Bosquet to win the faceoff in the defensive end. However, Canisius fights for it and regroups at the point here with Richards. Richards to the far side. Schaefer to Richards. Richards now to the near circle where he hits Noble with a pass. Noble cuts the slot, takes a shot. Nobody's there to tip it. It goes to the corner. McCarty sent it to the middle, back to the point. Richards, far side, there's a shot along the ice that goes off a leg into the corner. Canisius will regroup. Not a lot of urgency here from the Crusaders, and taking advantage of that is St. Francis, and sending it the length of the ice is Cameron Lopez. Now just 2.15 remain in the power play. St. Francis or checking in the neutral zone, but Canisius gets it in over the line with Pepis. Pepis sends it back to the point for Schaefer. Schaefer, it's held in. Now Schaefer receives the pass from Braun, goes down below the goal line to Pepis. Pepis tried to force it in front. It goes off a leg. The puck's still loose. Stick goes flying. Canisius has it. The goaltender's lost his stick, but good work from the defenseman to get it back to him. And now we've got a penalty coming up to St. Francis. Wow, five on three hockey for 155. Remember what happened when uh, St. Francis got the five on three advantage? That's what really opened the day for the Red Raiders. Now the Crusaders get that chance. The last goal being scored by Bryson Roberts from Chevetta. That was at 5.04 of the second period. Haven't had a goal since. We've got 4.51 to go in this third period as, I beg your pardon, the penalty goes to Canisius, however, so it will negate the remainder of the five minute major and then some as there's a minute 51 to go on the St. Francis penalty to Ahmed. So scratch everything we just said. Yeah. It'll be four on four hockey. Yeah, that's a killer for the Crusaders. That, that's an absolute killer. Wipes away <clears throat> the rest of your power play, which to be honest, you weren't getting much on anyway. And now it's four on four. This is free range for St. Francis. Methane brings it <clears throat> through the neutral zone. It's poked away. Braun regroups. Braun on his backhand gets it in over the line and a delayed off sides. Now checking up are the Crusaders through the neutral zone. Here's a fast break opportunity for Max Taylor the other way. Takes a long shot from the far ash mark that's grabbed and held by Mike Gold. 4.22 to go. And the other thing this does, it's really going to prevent Canisius from pulling their goalie early because you're going to get to about maybe two minutes and you're still going to be down a man. You're going to have to wait till you're back to, you know, five skaters before you start pulling your goalie. We'll see how aggressive <clears throat> Sam Belzito is with pulling his tender, skating through the neutral zone and getting a nice shot there was Adam Trubish. However, Walzak, who's had a hell of a night, grabs it and hangs on for the whistle. Walzak entered today with a 940 save percentage. He's stopped 18 of 18 so far today. In the corner, it pops along the wall. Canisius will try to send it back in. It gets poked away. Chavetta will loft it into the offensive end where Canisius will regroup as you see St. Francis not forechecking much on this four on four. Definitely instructions from Jack Panic, their head coach, as Canisius will skate it through the neutral zone. The left circle, now down below the cage with it. Pepis left it there to the point. Now Pepis receives the pass. It goes down low to the corner. Chavetta will pop free to send it off the half wall, trying to poke it out with St. Francis, but Canisius will keep it in for the moment, and they will continue to do so as the defenseman steps up and gets it now to the near corner. Chavetta couldn't clear it. It pops to the middle. Now Chavetta will send it off the wall and out to center. Turning with it is Schaefer. Schaefer with the puck in his skates. 
Got it to his defensive partner who fires it off the glass. Here's an opportunity in front of the net. The puck's still free as Braun got behind the defense as the puck came off the wall right at the goaltender Walzak. However, Walzak steers it aside with now three minutes to go in the third period with the final penalty to Canisius expiring in seconds. There's a shot that gets tipped right out in front. French was there, but he wasn't there fast enough. 2 nothing. we stand with 2.45 to go. Teams at even strength. Below the Canisius cage, coming away with it are the Crusaders with Spies. Spies stands his ground. Now he falls as he got taken down by St. Francis and Josh Monaco. There's a long slap shot that gets blocked for the Crusaders. Braun now to the corner. He'll eat a, level, a leveled cross check there in the corner as now they still battle away in the corner. Canisius jabber John away with St. Francis. Luke Braun's down there. And now back the other way, Canisius will have possession in their own end. The hit will knock the puck free. St. Francis puts on the four check. Canisius defenseman lost his stick. Now below the cage, Canisius will have it with Pepys. To the near side and fired out of the zone by Richards. Sent right back in though by Kirkpatrick. And a whistle with a minute 50 to go in the third period. Two nothing, St. Francis. You know, reminder, uh Thursday is hockey night in the Fed from Northtown Center. We're going to have three games again on tap from the Northtown Center. Starts with the girls game, Niagara County versus Williamsville at 4.30. And then two boys games. First will be Sweet Home to Pew at Clarence, followed by another rivalry game, Williamsville North at Williamsville East. We saw Williamsville East on Thursday lay a beating on West Seneca East. Will East is firing on all cylinders so far this season. Excited for those Thursday matchups. Hope you tune in for a couple of those on Thursday. That'll be pretty much every Thursday throughout the high school hockey season. We'll have all your coverage for you at Western New York Athletics. So Canisius has pulled the goaltender, and they'll have an icing to bring the puck down inside St. Francis's territory with a minute 17 on the clock. You need, when we said you needed a quick one at the start of the third, well, you mean it double now. You need one right away off this faceoff here if you're Canisius. However, we know how crazy hockey can get here. And I just looked at the Canisius net. There's no one in there. So Crusaders now have six skaters out there. Face off one by the Crusaders. Back to the point it goes to Mathian. Mathian sends it to the corner. Turning with it here is Keane. Sending it down low are the Crusaders. Battling for it is Braun. Braun turns and fires one to the front. It's knocked down. There's a shot from the slot. It gets blocked by the Francis. Red Raiders and fired the length of the ice. And a nice job by St. Francis to get the bodies in the lane in front of the net. And then fire it down. They'll get the change on the icing. Two, nothing the score. 57 seconds remain. And that's all you need to do. You, you kind of go for the goal, but just get it down the ice. Get off the, get a new group out there. Just reset. Canisius with possession off the draw. Keen tries to backhand it off the wraparound. However, it misses everybody and goes all the way inside Canisius territory where they'll have to regroup and get it out to center. Now this is where it's crucial to break out well. Canisius hasn't been able to do so much today. It's fired back in by St. Francis. It went off a player, so not an icing. Canisius. Through the neutral zone, fires it in below the goaltender's line. And leaving it there was Walzak. St. Francis would like to pin this one against the wall. However, it'll be Luke Daigler coming away with it. Back to the point, almost stolen away as Mathean couldn't get everything he wanted on that shot. Ten seconds to go. Back to the point. Stouffer takes a shot. It's blocked in front. Rebound, poked to the side of the cage. Into the corner it goes with two and now one. St. Francis takes the rivalry match. They sweep the season series. And Brendan Walzak gets the shutout in a 2-0 victory over the Crusaders. Well, we saw St. Francis team. They get their second win against this Canisius. Against Canisius, they came out with a strong... Uh, they got that first goal, even though maybe... They didn't have quite as strong a start. They got the first goal, and at the right moments, they kept the energy up, and as the game went on, they just got stronger and put away Canisius. It was two goals that were scored in the first period by Shavetta, then the second period 
by Roberts from Shavetta. Those are your only two goals in the game. 2-0 the final score. A great job from Brendan Walzak as he stood his ground, stopping all 20 shots in this one. As Walzak now adds another win to his column this season, two of those of which are coming against Can Canisius. Yeah, he had an imp impressive performance. He saw, you know, he plenty of shots, plenty of chances. Remember that first period we talked about, there were even some shots or bounces that came off his own guys that he had to save. So he put on a imp an impressive performance so far. But I noticed later on it was his teammates who really picked up the slack. They scored and they played great defense, especially down the stretch. Well, that'll just about do it for us here from Harbor Center and downtown Buffalo. The Red Raiders walk this one off 2-0 thanks to goals from Shavetta and Roberts. We thank you for joining us here on the Western New York Athletics. On behalf of everyone on our crew today, Russ Battaglia, Francis Beck, I'm Jack Cruiser, and I bid you adieu. When it's time to sell your home, start with a visit to howardhanna.com. Rank the number one real estate site for sellers. We can get you the most money in the quickest amount of time because we know where the local buyers are and how to reach them. Get started today at howardhanna.com. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>